wonderful. I'm so excited to be here with you. Well, we're just gr thrilled because Saturday, Norman and I did not have a concert, a rare weekend. Yes. And we thought, let's go and see Sandy. Because you know, I'd never seen you do a full concert. Oh, that's what you said. So Norman and I flew up to Philadelphia to see Sandy and Wayne do a concert. And it was one of the most enjoyable evenings mm -hmm. I have ever spent. It was great. Thank you. We yeah. have a good time. And you're up there for a while. Yeah. yeah. It's almost three hours. Yeah, when Wayne is, Wayne Watson has been great to, to have on the road and he, he does part and we, we have a good time. Now, this time it was, you have four kids and it was Buddy's weekend yes. to be with you and he yes. came on stage. <laughs> Do you think they're watching at home? I kind of think that they are. Uh, Jonathan, Anna is our oldest, she's uh, six and a half. Hi Anna. The twins are Jonathan and Jennifer, they're three. Hi Buddy, hi Jenny. <laughs> and the baby is Aaron. She's 14 months, and that very handsome man is John <laughs> there. Now, where did you meet John? I met him at college. Uh, he and I went to Anderson College in uh, Anderson, Indiana. It's now Anderson University. Hmm. And I was a music major. John was a business major. Do you remember and what it was about him that, you, that made you think, <laughs> well, there were quite a few things, actually. But I was always uh, drawn to his very gentle spirit. Mm. And I always thought, of course, he was very handsome. And he was so mm -hmm. kind and was a very hard worker. And, and uh, you know, at, in college, you do a lot of, uh, you know, variety shows and stuff, homecoming and things mm -hmm. like that. And he always ran the lights. And I just thought he did such a great job. And he's still <laughs> lighting up my life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered. When I heard you sing on Saturday night, you've sung for so many years now, and there's so many songs that people want to hear. And you must have sung them a million times. Does it sometimes happen in concert that a song you've sung and sung and sung suddenly means more to you on a particular evening? Very, very much so. Um, because I, I'm not at the same place. And I hope that in my Christian walk, I will not be at the same place next year as I am um, this year. And some of the songs that um, I've sung for a long time it, particularly the other night, a song called So Far, hmm. um, really hit me um, at this particular time in my life. So far you've brought me, so far you've taught me, so far that everything I need you are. And now hmm. another turn to take, another choice to make. I can't believe we've come so far. Hmm. And um, when I recorded that, I you know, was just newly married, didn't have four children. And, and now at this time in my life, my roles are are very different and the choices are very different mm -hmm. but I know that he's been with me so far and the Lord will continue to be with me. As we approach Easter weekend and I was looking I've been doing a study on the words of Christ from the cross and when he cried out my God my God why have you forsaken me? You've had a tough year I mean we were all horrified at the, the arson but also Buddy had a terrible accident what happened with him? Um, just about a year ago, right before he turned two, he, he's, a, he's a wild man. I, I mean, love he, He's so full of energy and uh, gets into all kinds of things, loves to explore. Well, one particular day, he was kind of playing with a, with a very heavy piece of furniture, pulled it down on top of himself. It was a hall tree that we have in our, in our hall. Pulled it down on top of himself and got a skull fracture, which caused some bleeding into his brain, and so we immediately rushed him to the hospital after the CAT scan showed that there was some hemorrhaging and they did brain surgery on my, on my two-year-old very full of life son and I remember thinking as John and I handed him to the to the nurse you know I wonder if we were ever gonna see him again or if we were ever gonna hear his little chuckle and his wonderful laugh and and uh, he has this gorgeous red hair and they had to shave his his head to do the surgery and and um, in God's tender mercy um, God chose to, to completely heal him, and the surgeons just did such a beautiful job. And uh, he's doing all the things now that got him hurt in the first place, just <laughs> full of life again, and we're just so very grateful for that. When the fire happened, I remember reading about it and being horrified. Just, I felt cold inside. Mm. I felt sickened. How did you respond to that initially? Well, initially, I... I at first, I was really numb. It's, it's funny what you do when, when you're faced with a crisis and you hear the, uh, the word immediately. Um, uh, someone came to our house very, very early in the morning because they wanted uh, us to hear it from them, not on the phone. And, and uh, they said, you know, the helping agency is on fire and we're probably going to lose most of it. And I remember thinking, okay, well, 
can't really do anything, so I'll just go back to sleep. And <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of woman. <laughs> I tell you. But of course, then the, then the truth of what they were saying hit, and you can't obviously go back to sleep. And for a long time, we really didn't know who was responsible for the fire and, and why. And there were some statements made that, the, that they would continue to harass us, which certainly uh, put our family, I think, in, in real fear for a long time. And we just kind of closed ourselves off in our house. And then I think about two weeks after the fire, I thought, you know what? My God is bigger than this. And I am going to choose to trust in his, in his power and his security and his protection. And, and certainly, we need to be wise in that. But you know, nobody can take the freedom that God has given us away from us. And so it was just really one day John and I just decided we're just going to step out and trust God to be all that he is. Now I said that you've won four Grammys, 26 doves. I know you don't sit at home playing chess with your dove awards. <laughs> <laughs> What's most important to you in your life? My relationship with the Lord is definitely the most important thing. To be the kind of woman that God would have me to be pervades all the other areas of my life. Mm. To be the kind of woman that God would have me to be helps me in my relationship with my husband. To be the kind of wife that God would have me to be. Also to be the kind of wife that my husband needs. It's one thing to pray, Lord, help me be a good wife. But it's a very different thing to pray, help me to be the kind of wife that my husband needs. Mm. And, um, and to help me to be the kind of mother that my children need. And those relationships are very much the most important thing. And I want the choices in my life to reflect what I say my priorities are. And sometimes those choices will mean saying no to some things that are wonderful opportunities, but would take me too much away from my family. I want you to imagine you're a fly in the wall, and it's a birthday party, maybe Anna's birthday party. And she, they're all talking about their mothers. What would you like, Anna? What would you like the most important thing about you to be in Anna's life? Boy, what a great question. Um, I hope that, I mean, two or three things come, come to mind. One is I hope that she sees me as someone who loves life, mm -hmm. that there is joy. My mom is fun, you know, that she may express it that way. Mm -hmm. But I hope that there is a sense of joy. Mm -hmm. I hope that she will always know that I love her dad. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that she will always know that however that translates to a six-year-old mind and whatever words she uses, that Jesus Christ is a significant factor in my life. Mm. Um, I hope those are the things that she knows. You co-hosted with Clifton, Clifton Davis, Davis. Uh -huh. the Dove Awards, and did a phenomenal oh, job. You. Are you that doing it again this year? I'm doing it again this year. The Dove Awards will be April the 11th, and on the National Network, I guess that's okay to say, isn't that's it? That's okay. We like those channel. good folks down there in Nashville. <laughs> and uh, it'll be live. It'll be, it'll be a, a good show, I think. Oh, Clifton big. is wonderful mm -hmm. to work with. He really is. Yeah. If, you, if somebody came to you and said, okay, Sandy, for one week, we're going to take care of the children and, and John's in business. You have one week, just oh. you. You can do anything you want in the world. What would oh. you do? Oh. Apart from thank God. <laughs> <laughs> hey, stay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh boy. I, I don't know what I would do. I would probably find, a, find just a quiet little place and, and sleep for about two days <laughs> with four kids. You know, you don't sleep through the night much anymore. Mm -hmm. Have a couple of good nights, sleep through the night, walk a little bit, exercise a little bit study the word a little bit, and then probably be ready to get back. This is a well-rounded woman, folks. <laughs> we have some people in the audience who'd like to ask Sandy some questions, so I'm going to ask our first person if they'd like to ask their question. Maybe you can introduce yourself first. Hi, Sandy. Hi. My name is Angie Wooten. I'm from the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg. I was wondering about some of the things that have influenced your music. Um, do you have some classical training, or are there some specific musicians or singers that have influenced your music? My uh, my mom and dad are probably I grew you know I grew up with them singing. My dad was a minister of music, and so um, that was certainly kind of my beginning of learning about music. When I grew up, I listened to Barbra Streisand a lot and Karen Carpenter. I mean, their musical style and their communication skills were just wonderful. And I studied when I was when I got to college. I, I studied music. I um, did a couple of operas and did the arias in Handel's Messiah, and not the young Messiah, but the older, <laughs> more mature Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, really had a good time. In fact, I still touch base with my voice teacher from time to time. She keeps me well oiled. And every now and again, I do see Sandy in the back row of my concerts taking notes. So I'm saying no more than that. <laughs> <laughs> we have somebody else with a question. Hi, my name is Sharon Sabah, and I'm from Hampton, Virginia. And I just, I just loved listening to all your music. And I just wondered if you had one particular song that meant a lot to you, and also if you had one special moment, maybe in your concert, that meant a lot to you. Thank you. That's a great question. You know. I there are a lot of songs that from time to time have just really become very, very special to me. But I think right now there's a song on the new record called I Give You Peace that, um, you know, I think in the, in the hustle and bustle of life, um, peace is something that all of us strive for. And it's not so much an external peace where things fit nicely in a row, but it's an internal peace that, that truly is beyond our understanding but it's something that God graciously gives to us if we will receive it. Now we have a visitor, a guest with us in the audience who has an unusual story and perhaps can you introduce yourself first and tell me how did you first hear about Sandy's music? Hi, I'm Leanne Paul and I'm from Virginia Beach. Uh, several people would come up to me and tell me that I look like Sandy and I never heard of you so I went to the Heaven and Earth bookstore and some people came up to me there and so I bought it and I listened to your music and it blessed me in so many ways and I was saved. Aww. Wow! Mindy. <laughs> that is uh, that is so special. Thank you very much. Um, that that's Really, that's why I do what I do, I think, because I know that the power of the word that it has done in my life, and, and I'm just thrilled when I hear that other people's lives have been changed. Um, but I, I kind of have a personal question for you. Do you think you could maybe fool my kids because then you could go <laughs> home and <laughs> I could have that week off? <laughs> hey, that works. <laughs> She's only kidding, kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See Buddy and Jenny up in arms at <laughs> yeah. home. We won't our mom. <laughs> when you have such a crazy schedule and you're out so much doing concerts, how do you find time just to be a mom and to hang with the kids? <laughs> well, one of the things that I that we try to do, we try to take our kids with us, but with four, you know, we just feel like we're just, you know, babysitting all the time. What we've been trying to do this year is take one at a time. It's a great um, idea. Especially with the twins, you know, they are together all the time. And um, I just want them to really always have a sense that they're individuals mm -hmm. and they're not this unit that's stuck together. <laughs> so that has been great to, to take them one at a time. That gives us some great time with them. It doesn't um, overwhelm the whole schedule when we're on the road. And yeah. so they don't feel left out and, and we feel like we're getting to know our kids just a little bit better. I think we have one more question from our audience. What's your name? Hi, Sandy. My name is Pamela Green, and I'm here. Um, I live in Virginia Beach. And hi, Sheila. Hi, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wanted to say, about six years ago, um, when I first started listening to your music, I wrote you a letter uh, asking you how to get started in this business. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't expect an answer. But not only did I get an answer, but I, it wasn't just a one-page, one-paragraph answer, but it was a three-page letter, detailed letter, with uh, about ten names and addresses of people that I could contact who help, you know, uh, people who want to get started in the Christian music business. And uh, lots of good advice, and, and I just wanted to say thank you very much. And you don't know how much you have influenced my life. There are people here from my church who can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> But I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much.